Okay, folks, welcome to another Sunday Night Futures Live. It is another trading week, another wild ride expected. E-minis have just opened up, down about, about a, just shy of a half percentage point. We're coming off of a support level here. These are the E-mini S&P 500 futures. We have support at... 3686. 3686. So I want to set up an alert here. And it's official. We, we This is a new monthly low. God damn it. Sorry, folks. All right. I want to know if we break that support level. If we do, it's going to get ugly. But I have a feeling that they're going to defend this support level and they're going to try to rally this market. I'll go over why in a moment. Uh, what we're going to talk about today are a few things. One, obviously, we're going to go over the futures action. I'm going to do a real quick run through. Then we're going to go into some news items for the new trading week that may affect the markets. Then we're going to take a look at earnings calendar. Who's reporting earnings? Then we're going to talk about silver short squeeze. Is it myth? Is it reality? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit. And then I want to talk about the monthly charts. How did we close out the month last week for not just the indexes, but for the sectors as well? So it's really uh, important that we do this. And one chart in particular is a very, very serious chart. I'm going to show you where we have a bearish divergence on the stock price or the price of the index relative to the relative strength indicator so stick around first before we just broke support let's drill down here to a 15 minute chart really quick our next support level here is at 3660 3660 New lows. Now we're down a percentage point. All right, our alert's set. I prefer not to uh, just stare at the chart. Uh, ooh, big sell order just came in. Down one spot, one three percent. We have some buyers moving in. Okay, so we're going to go over the monthly charts. We're going to talk about the bearish divergence. But first, buyers moving in now. If they close it back above the support level here at 36.83, they're going to rally it. Big tug of war going on here. Big, big tug of war. Obviously, the bulls, bears are in charge. <laughs> They're going to go for it. They're going to tap that support level. Let's see who's in here. 
Who do we have? Franklin. Hey, brother. NY Jets, hello. East Wave, summary. Hell yeah. <laughs> Savage. I can't read that word. I'll get, I'll get a, uh, a demonetized for the uh, video. Uh, NY Jets, my biggest is AUMN, some FSM, AG, AGQ. Looked really good last week. Mr. G, hello to you, sir. Larry, Trader Isaac, how are you? Larry. Larry from Louisville. Ben, hello. Big Bear. Costco. Uh, does this index also impact Bitcoin mining companies? I'm not sure what index you're referring to. If that question was pointed at me, I'm not sure. Fubo. Andy. There could be a short squeeze. Yeah, Andy, if, there, if there's short interest, sure. Definitely. Oral, hello. Uh, Will, hello to you. Hey, Bob, took MU short at 87. Interesting. Semis did horribly last week. Good for you. MacArthur, hello. Nestor. <laughs> Let's go silver. Yeah, we've been in it. We were ready. Like button smasher. Yes, smash that like button. Don't sell GME. Be careful. Be careful with GME. Uh, Bonnie Bean, hello. Hello, sweetie. Todd, hello to you from Niag Niagara Falls. I bet you're getting a lot of snow. We didn't get it yet. Karim, hello. Adam, hello. Suresh. Hey, Suresh. 48 shenanigans. Hello, brother. All right. Let's, um, let's pay some bills here. All right. I'm going to be going over, let's go to the um, the futures first. Let's take a, a quick stroll around. All right, so you're seeing some buyers move in here. They're bidding the uh, S&P 500 off the lows of the session. Let's see how the other indexes are faring. NASDAQ 100, down about the same, 1% at current. New monthly lows across the board here. Small caps. Where are my small caps? Here we go. Crushed. They're down well over a percentage point. Now we are short, for disclosure purposes, we are short of the Russell 2000. We are short of uh, the Qs, which is uh, the NASDAQ 100. We'll go to the metals in a moment. So equities weak across the board. The dollar, this is no shock here. Beware the U.S. dollar. I'm going to show you a chart, a monthly chart of the U.S. dollar in a moment. That's that's pretty bullish, I got to say. And I don't want a, U, a strong U.S. dollar. But we don't speak our book here. We tell it like it is. And the dollar closed up on the month. And fairly strongly at that. So we'll go to that chart, monthly time frame in a moment. The, the uh, U.S. dollar at current. Uh, new daily highs versus Friday. Actually, no, that's inaccurate when you include the pre-market. That's inaccurate. My bad. But a strong open here for the dollar. Gold. Look at this shoot up higher, and they sold into it. Wow, look at that. Big vol. Four-hour chart. Man, I'll tell you, if they fail to hold the support level, it's going to get ugly for gold. It's still up. It may rally back. But there was a lot of volatility last week, and it's carrying through to this week. And with the dollar up, it's going to be a problem for gold to maintain any type of a rally. Silver. 
Drum roll, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> Savages. Spiked up nearly 6.5% off the highs of the session despite the strong U.S. dollar. Silver is very heavily shorted. Let's take a look at some other commodity prices. Lumber, threatening to break out to higher highs here. These are four-hour charts. Platinum, up 1.5%. Palladium, up as well, but wow. What a hammering it took on Friday. Wow. Wow. Corn prices, inflation, folks, inflation, corn moving up higher, soybeans down, actually, wheat down as well, but I'll tell you, this is getting ready for a breakout. We're right there. I wouldn't buy it yet, but soon, very, very soon. Let's check out the weekly chart on wheat. That's a daily chart. Wow, look at that daily chart. Real pretty. Weekly chart looks like a monster. Big reversal bar last week. Monster. All right, let's take a look at some things that can shake the market this coming week. GOP senators offer up a $600 billion compromise deal for COVID relief. Biden wants $1.9 trillion. They have $600 billion. Guess who's going to win? They don't have control of the Senate. Uh, more spending to come. But the fighting back and forth... Some indecision may impact the market adversely, but in the end, Biden will win. He'll get his way. Elections have consequences. Whether you agree with him, you don't agree with him. He's, he's, he's got both houses of Congress, and that's it. Earnings. Not much tomorrow, but we have a lot of energy coming out this week. And internet plays as way as well as long as uh, biotech, pharmaceutical. So on Tuesday is really when it starts happening. One of my alerts just fired off here. Did we weaken up? I think that may have been a delayed... Oh, no. We broke that support level. Wow. They're trying to defend it. There's more behind this. This is not incredibly high volume. Okay, let's uh, get back to where we were. I have the alert set. If that fires off, we'll come back to that. Uh, Tuesday, Alibaba, Amazon, Google... Exxon Mobil, Biggie. Uh, what else do we have? Bunch of energy plays on Tuesday. PayPal on Wednesday. Qualcomm. eBay, not a big deal anymore. Uh, Pinterest, Snap, Merck, 
you know, those are yawn uh, earnings reports. Gilead, that's going to be interesting. Not much on Friday. The big one is going to be Tuesday, then Wednesday. Watch, uh, watch the volatility. All right, so what we're going to do here for a moment, I want to talk about the market and segue into the, um, the, uh, ch the monthly charge. But first, I want to pay some bills here. I put this off. Folks, this is going to be brought to you by TrendSpider. It is the next generation of automated technical analysis. I'm going to be showing you a feature when we do chart requests tonight. It's a new feature. I learned about it today. I've been toying around with it. It's pretty cool. I already found a way to use it. So stick around. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so automate your grunt work, speed up your analysis, improve your accuracy. And, and you need to improve your accuracy when you're speeding up your analysis. This is what this tool is delivered to me. Reduce your costly mistakes, find winning trade setups using one of the tools I'm going to show you tonight, along with their scanners, time your trades with precision using their alerts. They have a seven-day free trial offer. Go to their website, use the link below, 35% off. Lowest price on the web. Take a tour. They got a whole bunch of videos here. All good stuff. Good partners. Trend Spider, seven-day free trial offer, 35% discount code. Let's get to The market, folks, despite the fact we were down, is extremely expensive when measured by the Schiller P.E. ratio. I want you to keep this in the back of your mind when we go into the monthly charts. Now, we haven't been this expensive since the air was coming out of the dot-com bubble a long time ago. But this cannot be ignored. I'm not saying this can't go higher. It could quite very well do so, especially if Biden gets his way, they issue more stimulus. Do I believe there's going to be a correction? I've been saying it for two weeks now. Is it going to be a crash? I don't know. I'm not that smart. So we'll see how things unfold. Do, do monthly support levels break? Then we'll determine whether or not we have a, a crash on hand. Margin debt. Hope everybody could see this. All-time highs on margin debt. Think about all these guys... At Wall Street Bets, I support what they're doing. The, the analogy that I'll use is that the sharks on Wall Street have been feeding off the plankton, which is the little investor. Now you have the little investor. Here's a, a perfect, this is off of our Slack forum. The plankton are all gaining up now and feeding on the sharks. So... I'm all for it, man. I've seen these guys get away with murder for way too long. How could you short over 100% of a, of, of a stock's value or 100% of the number of shares issued? That's criminal to me personally. I'm not an attorney. So short interest is fueling this. The debt being issued by the Federal Reserve, the cheap money, is fueling all of this. This is... Fe frenzy from Wall Street bets, bets is being fueled by the federal government. They look no further than themselves, but they're never going to admit it. So at some point in time, the bill is going to come due. And when you take a look at GME, and I know I'm not going to get a lot of likes for this, but I'm not here to get likes. I'm here to help people lose money and avoid losing money first. When you take a look at GameStop, on a weekly time frame, folks, any of you that have been watching me for any length of time know that when I say it's not going to end well, it normally doesn't end well. And when you have RSI on a weekly time frame, now we shorted GameStop on a daily time frame with RSI over 98. You still have weekly RSI over 97. That's madness. I don't know how, we're not supposed to be here. It's crazy. And we're trading significantly above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. And my guess is, is that they'll spike it up higher tomorrow. So this is going to end horribly. It's being fueled by this, margin debt. And at some point in time, 
granted, you're not allowed to use margin any longer with uh, GME, but we got here using margin. This is not going to end well, folks. So please, those out there that are saying, I'm going to buy GME tomorrow morning, I beg of you, use a trailing stop loss order. Beg of you. But I do not provide investment advice. Do what you're going to do. All right, let's take a look at the monthly charts. So going into the monthly charts, we know we're expensive. We know we have a lot of margin debt. This is going to come off soon. This, this cascading effect of margin debt, margin calls being met, is going to bring this into line. So let's go to the monthly charts. Yield curve. On Thursday night, we went over this chart. On Thursday night, stock charts live. We went over the weekly charts. But I used the monthly chart to illustrate the yield curve. And it had come off considerably. But I said, one day makes a big difference. And sure enough, yields surged on Friday. And that sent the steepening yield curve to the highs of the month. This is stock market bearish. The yield curve, when it steepens, this is for the benefit of new viewers who haven't watched this before, when the yield curve steepens, generally at some point in time, the stock market buckles. I think the stock market is buckling now. This is 2000, steepening yield curve, stock market overlaid here in blue, rolled over. Back here in financial crisis, steepening yield curve, S&P 500 roll, overlaid in blue, Rolled over. Here we are again. S&P 500 hasn't gotten the message yet, but it's gonna. Bonds. Bonds holding support just barely. I'm not going to spend too much time here. They're in a lot of trouble. The U.S. dollar. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Yield. 10-year yield. Uh, I'm not going to be the least bit surprised to see a quick snap back here and a higher low get put in. But if we get that higher low, beware, folks for a major surge higher. So, warning flag on the track for bond yields. Expect a pullback. Watch a higher low, then we'll play connected dots. We'll connect the higher low to the prior low here from back in March, and we'll see whether or not we break out. Tips. Federal government says there's no inflation. There's inflation. The tip market is telling you that. These are Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. We closed out the month of January, just shy of the high, all-time highs, and we closed at all-time highs. So all-time closing highs, this is only going up higher. The U.S. dollar, I mentioned this earlier, that the U.S. dollar had a very good month last month, and in fact, it flashed a bullish key reversal bar. I have a five-part free video series about my five favorite candlesticks. There's a link below to any one of my YouTube videos. Or if you want a link below on the uh, video description area, sign up. You can get it free. We, this is an indicator to me that we're probably going to move up higher. And in fact, we already have. In the futures market, the dollar is very strong today. This is what worries me about the gold rally today, tonight. And the silver rally, usually it's very difficult for those metals to rally for a sustainable period if you have the U.S. dollar rallying as well. So, you know, Wall Street bets, you know, they, they're saying they're going to uh, squeeze the shorts. You know, it's going to be difficult when you have the U.S. dollar rallying higher. So, warning flag for those that really want to speculate hard here. The VIX. And we're going to go to a chart of silver in a moment. Again, for disclosure purposes, we are long of silver. We are long of the uh, silver miners. We are long of the gold miners. VIX, very powerful month last month. Up 45, nearly 45.5%. We closed off the highs. Not that bad, though. We can break out here. Let's take our crayon out. I'll share with you my thoughts of what's going to happen. What I think is going to happen, and it flies in the face of what's happening in the futures market right now at the S&P 500. For those not familiar, the VIX is 
trades inversely of the S&P 500. Sometimes they don't. That's a, a warning flag. But in general, they trade inversely of one another. So if the VIX is higher, the S&P 500 is moving lower in general. Here's what I think is going to happen. Weekly chart. I think, and again, this flies in the face of what we're seeing right now with the S&P 500 so low. It's down one and a quarter percent on last look. But I think we're going to pull back. We're going to do a retest of around 2750. I think they're going to rally the S&P 500 back as soon as tomorrow morning. If not, maybe someday, Monday, maybe you're going to get a turnaround Tuesday. But they're going to rally it. Because markets generally, absent a geopolitical event, rarely just go straight down. So I don't think interest rates have hit a level yet that really is going to spook institutional investors to make them sell. Not yet anyway. So I think we're going to get a pullback here and a retest. And then that's going to set the stage for a higher low and then a potential breakout. And what we'll be looking for on the S&P 500 is, let's go to a uh, weekly chart here. We'll come back to the monthly chart. Is a lower high on the S&P 500. If in fact I'm right, and they rally the S&P 500 back, and we hold this 3,700 mark, and they rally it, yet we do not take out all-time highs, and then we roll over and we take out 3,700, confirmation breakdown. The path of least resistance has now changed from being up to now down. Odds favor bears. So we're not there yet. And I'm saying this looking at a chart that's very, very bearish. On the week ahead commentary with members, I was very, very bearish. But that doesn't mean that we're going straight down. It's a process. So beware here. Now, last week we flashed an outside reversal candlestick. Very, very bearish. But that doesn't mean we can't get a counter trend move. Monthly chart. Now, here's where it gets really, really interesting. Where's my monthly chart? Come on, Bob. I just had it up here. This is not the chart I wanted. I must have a few of them. All right. Let's start anew. So on a monthly chart, S&P 500, a bearish reversal bar. It's not a bearish key reversal bar because we did not close at the lows of the month. But this is very bearish. This is very toppy. Net net on the month, down one spot, one four percent. Now I mentioned earlier that there, there was a diverging divergence going on, and I want to show it to you right now. I'm going to share you with you a bull story first. Here's the bull story. S and P 500 broke out on RSI. Good stuff, right? Only one problem. Despite the fact that that we have moved to all-time highs and we broke out an RSI, the problem is, is that we haven't made a new high on RSI since January of 20. It's been one year. One full year, and the RSI has failed after all-time high, after all-time high, after all-time high in 2020, the RSI has failed to break out to new higher highs. This is a bearish divergence. Frankly, it gives me goosebumps. So, not good. The Dow Transports 
hammered. This is our canary in the coal mine for the stock market, down three and a third percent last month. Bearish key reversal. We close at the lows of the month. Horrible price action. The Dow Jones Industrials did not break support, but bearish key reversal bar on volume. Small caps annihilated, annihilated last month, down over four and a third percent on big, big volume. This is not mom and pop selling 100 shares of IWM. This is institutional selling. The trip queues closed up. I was surprised to see this. They closed up. No doubt Microsoft and its strength had something to do with this. So the jury's out here on the queues. Not a horrible month. The banks, bearish reversal bar, very weak. They made new all-time highs, couldn't hold it, failed. Technology. Not a horrible month, down month. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see it move up higher here. But the semis, they closed up, but man, were they annihilated last week. Look at the topping tail on the semiconductor sector. Take a look at the weekly chart here. We broke out above this upper band of resistance out of this ascending wedge formation, failed to hold support, broke down, semis are going lower. So whoever said that they were short of a semiconductor stock, good for you, because they're probably going a lot lower. Biotechs. I was unaware of this. Biotechs are very expensive, or very technically overbought relative to their third standard deviation Bollinger band. I just caught this today. So for those of you in... LABU, the leveraged ETF, use a trailing stop loss order. Just be aware of the fact that we closed out the month above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. Rarely does it do that. So that's going to resolve itself somehow, some way. Consumer discretionaries. Uh, monthly chart. They closed up, but let's face it, Starbucks, their decline of 5% in same store sales knock the wind out of consumer discretionaries. They managed to close up. I think that they just put in the top. Energy, absolutely and utterly annihilated. You may be saying, what are you talking about? They closed up. They closed up three and three quarters percent. But look at where they were. This is the XLE. It was as high as 45 bucks a share. It closed with a 30 handle. Big topping tail, lots of sellers above. We're probably going to get a pullback here. That's an opportunity. And Biden's policies are not going to help oil in the short term. Watch ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil reports this coming week. It's a vertical play. They drill over in Guyana. Every place that, that Biden wants people to drill, they drill. He just doesn't want people drilling in the United States. He wants his energy dependent. So... That's going to bode well for Exxon, not going to bode well for the fracking plays. So beware. Oil, up month, 6.5%, inflationary. Looks like it's going up higher. Gold closed down, no shock there. Struggling with the resistance, did not put in a new monthly low. That's important. But a down month, how is volume? Volume is light. Gold miners, of which we are long for disclosure purposes, we're holding 50. We got. I said last week, it's got to hold 50. Uh, so I still like the gold miners. I don't, I don't like the fact we didn't hold the highs of the month. So I'm a little bit concerned, especially with the U.S. dollar rallying right now. Gold money. Folks, I'm going to be doing a video on gold money. Uh, we own it. We have a profit in it. It's a very interesting play. Their financials are outstanding. Uh, they they are the owners of Schiff Gold. Peter Schiff, Schiff Gold. They bought them out. Peter Schiff is a co-owner of Gold Money. And that's the reason why I, bought, not, I, I like the business as well. 
But with Peter Schiff involved, I'm a big fan of Peter Schiff. Uh, I'm going to do a video on this about the company and my tale of as to why I like it, why I'm probably going to be adding more in the coming weeks, maybe even days. So more to come on gold money. It broke out last month. It was up 27.5%. It broke out of resistance. Yes, it's got a topping tail here. A lot of resistance at 3 bucks a share. Higher lows on RSI. Higher lows on Stokes. Love it. More to come. Silver. All right, we're along of the AGQ. This is a leveraged ETF, not for the faint of heart. Uh, we want to buy more here. Not on hype. I'm not going to chase a rally. We already have a position. I'll enjoy the rally higher. If they bring it up to ridiculous overbought levels, I'm going to sell. I'm not going to YOLO. It's not going to happen. So we have a breakout on a monthly time frame. Good stuff. I love the Stokes. I love the RSI. I like silver more than gold right now. So I think the, the timing of this squeeze, somebody was looking at a chart and saying, technically, yeah, man, this thing is ready to go. So I think that the technicals in and of themselves are going to make silver move up higher. You don't need Wall Street bets. That's just the cherry on the cake. So this is going up higher, a lot higher. So we are long of AGQ, as I mentioned, and the SILJ. Do I have a chart up here of them? Let's bring it up. These are the uh, the junior miners for silver. And while they close down on the month, they're very, very close. This is, I already have a chart saved here, pure funds. Let's go to that saved chart. Weekly chart, we broke out last week. So despite the fact the monthly chart is not looking good, the weekly chart here is looking really, really good. It broke out. I'm not going to be the least bit surprised to see a retest. In fact, I would embrace it. I would buy more on a retest of, say, 1460, 1475. We're not going to split hairs here. I think SILJ, AGQ, SLV, they're all going up a lot higher. Uranium, we booked profits here. Uh, this is going to pull back further, I believe. We're going to look to get back in. Why did we buy it? We bought it because we were doing an analysis of the monthly charts, just like we're doing right now. We saw the breakout back here in April. We bought it. We added more. We enjoyed the rally up higher. Now we sold it earlier in the month. Now we're looking for a pullback. And we'll look to enter Uranium. How'd the weekly chart look? Yeah, very poor week last week. We may make another lower low. We do have support at 14 on uh, URA. So we'll look to see whether or not URA holds the 14 level, and we'll look to get back involved with it. All right, emerging markets. They had a heck of a run. Last month did not end well. It was a really great month overall until last week. Big topping tails here. But this is an opportunity because I don't think that this dollar rally is going to last very long. In the short term, it's going to hurt emerging markets. This is the opportunity. 21% of all U.S. dollars were printed in 2020. That is dollar diluted. So any rally in the U.S. dollar is going to be short-lived. So this is the rally in the dollar is going to hurt emerging markets. I won't go into the details why, but it will hurt emerging markets. And this is your opportunity to watch for a setup. We booked profits here. We sold strength. Now we're looking to get back in on this weakness. We knew it was coming. So here we are. More to come here. Members, we will be looking to reload on the EDC. BRZU, we booked profits here as well. It too rolled over last month. In fact, it closed down 16%. Big oil play here. Oil is going up. 
Fracking in the United States is going down. Who's going to benefit? Brazil. But not right now. It's not time yet. And I think that's it. Let's uh, circle back to the futures. Yeah, they're, putting, they're, they're buying now. I think they're going to open it up higher tomorrow. I just want to get notified if we manage to go green here. All right, let's do some chart requests. Again, folks, this is brought to you by our friends over at TrendSpider. 35% discount code below. Take a tour. And I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, functionality change here. They have a... Uh, a new feature for those that are already subscribed. I know a bunch of you are go to indicators, the three, the three dots type in compare. You'll see you can type in price or compare and just click on this and you can add it to your widgets. I already have it. So I'm not going to click apply. So what TrendSpider has here is a functionality called, they call it, um, what the hell they call it again? I just drew a blank. Raindrops, duh. Raindrop charting. So raindrop charting is a mixture of candlestick charting, which we have up here. The however is, is that, they mix in VWAP, Volume Weighted Moving Average. So the left side of your candlestick, your raindrop, is the morning price action. The right side is your afternoon price action. So here's GameStop. Now, GameStop had a horrible day. There was a validation of this raindrop and candlestick. They correlated Same thing on Friday. Now, where might this have helped you with other stocks where they didn't necessarily correlate? Tesla. Tesla flashed a blue raindrop. That's a sign of indecision. It's like a doji star formation. It's an indicator that your trend is about to reverse. So we on that day, Tesla flashed a continuation breakout right here. So it looked like it was a bullish day. However, you had an indecision bar, and we, we failed to close at the highs of the day. That's probably what triggered that doji. So had you seen this, at the same time you're looking at your candlesticks and you're doing your analysis, you would have said, you know what? The trend is up here. We're running the risk of a trend reversal using the raindrop charts. Sure enough, ever since that day, we've rolled over on Tesla and we've had it lower. I'm not saying this is a crash. What I'm, I'm pointing out that had you been using this tool, you would have had this at your disposal to keep you out of trouble, right? So Tesla, that's how you could use. I'll do this more in the future. I'm just learning it today. Price compare with raindrop charting. There's a whole bunch of other functionality to use. Let's get some chart requests going here. Plug. This is for Justin. Justin. Here's an instance where you have a, a blue doji formation on the raindrop charts. And it coincided. It made sense with the price action on 
the 27th, where he had that big topping tail. That's a bearish sign. And sure enough, we spent a couple of down days. So let's do our higher level views. We're not going to stray from doing that. And unfortunately, I don't think they have raindrop charting on weekly charts. They don't yet. They're working on it. So plug power last week flashed a bearish reversal bar. Not good. This is probably going to go lower. I would be careful here. I would not be a buyer of plug power. And I'm basing it upon both the weekly chart as well as the daily chart. If you're looking for a support level, look for one down here. Plug possible long entry. We'll keep it active for, as a matter of fact, I want to know if we break through as well. We'll keep it set for five days and we're good to go. All right, so I have SOXS also. I think this is also for Justin. Weekly chart first. All right, so you, I, I already went over the semiconductor sector earlier. I, I'm bearish on it. I think it's going lower. Therefore, I think the SOXS, which is a leveraged ETF, putting you short of the semis, is going to go higher. So we broke out last week. We flashed an outside reversal bar, very bullish, daily chart. We broke out on Friday. We have a confirmation of this candlestick using the raindrop chart. Relative strength moving up higher. I think SOXS goes higher. Don't forget, my thesis earlier on was that we'll probably get a pullback on the VIX. That'll probably mean the entire stock market's going to rally, or the S&P 500. So you may get a brief pullback here. Watch for support to get hit. You'll probably get a retrace here if the markets go green, especially if they go green tonight. If that alert I just set fires off, you're going to see a rally tomorrow morning. All right. We're good to go. What else do I have here? CVS. It's got to hold last week's lows. I mean, if we make a new weekly low, I would avoid it. I think that, um, let's keep sensitivity really low here. If we retest last week's lows, you could, you could buy it on spec, but keep it, keep it tight stop loss. Jesus Christ, Bob. Really tight stop loss on this. If we break through a new weekly low, especially if we close down below or appear poised to close down below, that support level next week, you got to get out because we could retrace all the way down to 66 bucks a share. Daily chart. It's got to consolidate here. You need at least one or two more days of consolidation. How are the Stokes looking? Ugh. 
I don't like it. Stokes are very weak. Still declining. There's no rush here. No rush whatsoever. Fubo. Take a look at some comments. I'm not even looking here. Hey, cat. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Melissa Hodgman, wife of Peter Strzok. That's the FBI agent who uh, was up to a whole bunch of shenanigans and was fired. Named acting director of diversion of enforcement at SEC. Oh, my God. This is like Alice in Wonderland. It really is. Um, Jeffy Posky, C- CEO of Citadel, is the brother of press secretary. No way. The red-haired lady? Oh, my God. That's great information. All right. Fubo, let's go to a weekly chart. How to close out the week? It, it broke out technically. It wasn't a great breakout, but it broke out. I think this is one you definitely need to see a, re, a tr- retrace down to support. I don't like the uh, the wick, the shadow, whatever you, I call it, topping tails, call it cupcakes, it doesn't matter. What this implies, this wick, is that you had a lot of profit takers. So something happened here. You saw the same thing back here the week of December the 21st, and it corrected. So beware here. Daily chart. I don't like it. Let me bring my Stokes back up. I just took them off. Now I'm going to put them back on. You know, if they consolidate here and it holds this support level, that's fine. Um, I want to see the Stokes flatten out and begin to hook back up. I would stay very small with any opening position and use a stop right below last week's lows. So I'm not... A, I'm not all that excited about it. Just yet. It may change. All right. I'm not going to go over the monthly chart. Not enough time. All right. MU. MU. Good month. But similar to what you saw on the semiconductor sector. Remember, you had an up month on this SMH, right? And you had a big topping tail. Same thing here on MU. I know you're short of it, which is a good thing. We didn't break support. Weekly chart. We bounced off of it. Stokes is still overbought. Daily chart. We're consolidating. We're holding support. And this is really what you need to see on Fubo. What was the other one? CVS. Stokes, I'm not liking. I I wouldn't go add into a short here. But I would lean into that short on a break to a new lower low. Week over week. So, Micron is interesting. I wouldn't open up a short position here, though. But I believe you said you were already long, uh, short of it. 
So that's fine. SLV, we already went over, really. When we review the AGQ, same price action, although the AGQ is a leveraged ETF, you're going to get the same exact chart. Just go back on the replay. Scroll back. I have a ton of uh, requests coming in here. Uh, fuel cell, F-C-E-L. The monthly chart looks like a monster. But we did close the month out above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. That's got to get resolved. So that means you're going to need a little bit of selling pressure to take some of that froth off. You're already seeing it. You saw some selling pressure on the 25th, before that, on the 11th, despite the fact that both days or weeks they closed up. So beware here. This topping action forming. Daily chart. Yeah. Down day Thursday. Uh, down day Friday. Did we take out the lows? 2051. No, we did not. We met. We're holding support here at 2051. You break down below 2051 this coming week. We're probably coming down here to... Um, that's a big drop. I don't know about that. Trend Spider saying 15. I don't know about that. I'd be watching at 18.20 per share as a possible long entry. See if that holds. If that fails, I'd be watching 15.21. And that coincides with the automated trend line from Trend Spider. Boom. Right there. Perfect. Hey, Brad. How you doing, man? Long time. IRTC. Oof. Horrible. You, a lot of support was taken out here. Market sent you a signal last month. Actually, the month before last. December. That things were not going well. On RSI, we had a lower high and we broke support. And then you had a continuation move lower last week. So the market sent a signal here. Weekly chart. <sighs> Brutal. Down over 33.5% last week. We did bounce off of uh, a volume shelf. 133.64. I would beware here. You know, if you get a rally, take note of your stokes. Right? When you have both lines on stokes, trading down below 50 Rallies tend to fade, right? So this needs to get resolved. So be careful here. I would not chase this stock on a counter trend move. I think that ultimately it's probably going to break and head down lower. If 133.64 fails to hold, 108.50 is your next logical support level. eBay, eBay reporting earnings next week. Broke out last month. The however is, 
Sellers moved in, taking it off, but net net, it broke out. Weekly chart, reversal bar. Going back to the monthly chart, I want to edit this because I want to have this monthly chart appear. It's not letting me do it. Hmm. Why are you not letting me do it? There you go. You have to do it on the initial. Okay. Good. Weekly chart. There it is. So this here is technically the monthly breakout point and a weekly breakout point. What I want to see here is eBay. Remember, earnings this week. I would not buy it before earnings. I'm going to keep this active for 10 days. Yeah, daily chart. I would wait for a breakout here. I wouldn't buy it in front of earnings. It's too risky. Um, it's a watch to me. I need to see a retest of that monthly support level on eBay. So I'm neutral on it. I, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see a breakout. But I'm neutral on it. Stokes are rolling over as well. So beware. Beware of earnings. All right, folks. Let's circle back. We'll leave off with the close. Sorry, I can't get to everybody's uh, requests. I just don't have enough time. If you become a member, I always go over members first. So sign up, 14-day free trial offer. Okay. Um, Immunities have certainly stabilized here. Gold has, has, hasn't changed much. All right, gold is suspect, unless, of course, the dollar weakens. And the dollar has not weakened. It is up. Silver. Actually, you know what? I pulled up the Russell. It's managed to recapture support. I think they're going to rally the market. I think they're going to rally it. Silver, oh my God. Still up. Gains, gains more strength. Up 6.84%. At some point in time, you're going to get some profit taking. And on that pullback, I want to be a buyer. And yes, we send out alerts to members. When we buy 
sell or add. You know what? Let's raise this, raise this up a little bit. Okay. NASDAQ 100. I get the feeling they're going to rally it. I just do. I think they wanted to pull it back tonight to test support levels, to see how many buyers they had down there. Now, if we if we do roll over and we take out the lows of the session, it's going to be Armageddon tomorrow. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I, if you go back, you just joined in now, go back earlier in the replay when we go over the monthly charts of the VIX and I lay out what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to rally this market into the beginning of the week. VIX will pull back and retest a breakout point. Then I think we see the markets come under pressure yet again. Watch the earnings on Tuesday and Wednesday in particular because you have a potential for a shock there. Amerigo, these are not short squeeze moves higher. Watch momentum. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Silver was ready to go anyway. We didn't need Wall Street bets or anything else. All right, everybody, please. This is probably one of the highest... Uh, viewed live streams that we've had so far great to have you here folks please smash the like button hit the bell button get alerted for the next time we go live i have a list below where if you want to get alerted 15 minutes to a half hour prior to us going live enter your email address we hate spam too you're not gonna get spammed and if but if you're already on one of our email lists for anything don't enter your email address again because you're gonna get emailed twice and you're gonna say hey, you lied to me you're spamming me so uh, Trendspider 35% discount code, my service, join our gang, the contrarian trader, link below, 14 day free trial offer, get Trendspider for free, gold and silver level memberships. Everybody have a profitable trading week, beware GameStop, Best Buy, I have a price target on Best Buy, not Best Buy, I keep saying that, Blackberry, 1302. Around there, I think it was 1320. Yeah, 1320 on Blackberry. If we get a pullback to that mark, I may be a buyer, assuming that the market is not rolling over. So, members, more to come there. Have a great trading week, a profitable trading week. Stay safe, be well.